little better. And um, I'm situated to lean back, but I'm probably gonna have to lean up to see my beads. <laughs> I didn't plan this out. All right, so I'm making a reversible zigzag bracelet out of diagonal tubular peyote stitch. Cause it goes on a diagonal, but it's a tube of peyote stitch. Why is my black light pulsing? Oh, I just bought you. You're fine. Like you're less than a year old. I... It's gonna bother the crap out of me. <laughs> my big black light is like pulsing weird. Okay, hello and welcome. Um, I'm just here. <laughs> to get a new one I'm gonna be so upset anyway I have a piece of glow-in-the-dark beadwork here made out of Delica size 11s Got several colors all luminous oh this one's Toho so they're not all Delicas this one's a Toho Echo. need to rebuy that one but it's expensive Ta -da! Glow in the dark beads, glow in the dark bracelet. My thread is not glow in the dark, but it is. it does match the orange when it is daylight. And these beads on the outside are actually opaque white. They look kinda, I don't know, orangey, pinkish. Pinkish on stream. You know, one of the two. So, I'm just going to slowly bead. And I mean slowly because uh, it is dark in here, obviously, otherwise the beads would not glow. So I have no like rhyme or reason to this bracelet. It's going to be a long piece in progress. It's gonna take forever to make it. So I just kind of uh, let the zigzags happen where they want to. Jess, hello Pearl, hello, welcome. Thank you, thank you for responding to my concerns <laughs> on, on, on Discord. It's just like, my arm still hurts. It's so weird. It, like, I went in at, what time did I go in this morning? Like, my appointments are at 9.20 in the morning. And, like, it's, like, 12 hours later, and it's still, like, stiff. It's right up here. I don't, I don't, I don't like the electrical stimulation so far. But, like, maybe I just have a high pain tolerance anyway and don't know what's too high. I don't know. They're not telling me the settings. So far, I don't like it. Okay. But how are you today? What are you up to? How have you been since yesterday? <laughs> since yesterday. Two days in a row, guys. What? I might not last long today. I've just been kind of kind of sleepy in general. Part of it is because it's overcast. Part of it is I've just been sleepy after my chiropractic visits anyway, like the whole day of, which is kind of weird for me. I don't know why that's happening. But uh, yeah, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to stay on for a couple hours, but I can't make it. You'll know why. You will like it better when it's the right level. Just tell them to lower it. I will. But like, I'm just kind of intimidated at this point of the thing anyway, because it's like, man, it just sucks. <laughs> just got home from work, about to hit the shower. Good, good, okay, cool. Um, yeah, because the first time, it was higher than it is now. I know that much, you know, because the first time I was just like, okay, let's, you know, tell them to stop when I can't stand it anymore. And every time since then, you know, I haven't asked them to have it as high as that first time, but I still don't know what the, the settings are and it makes it kind of hard to, <laughs> kind of hard to say, hey, lower it when you don't know how high it was in the first place, you know? Okay. 
My beads are kind of blurry, but they do glow, so they will look blurry. So yeah, I'm just going to ask more questions next time I go in, which will be Monday. And by then, you know, my arm shouldn't hurt anymore, which is good, but at the same time, it shouldn't be now. Uh, also, Jess, why have you been going to a chiropractor since you were 12? Like, that's, that's a long time. What happened at 12? I have a portable one at home. Just listen to your body. Have them stop before it feels intense. Right, and the thing is, it doesn't, like, super feel intense. Even even at, like, the higher setting where, where I was at, you know, I could have still kept going. But I know that that's too high because my arm can't take it in the end. So it's like... How do I know what the right setting is? Because my back would feel almost nothing, which is probably the goal. In order for my arm to not ache afterwards. Because it's it's like the like where you get your like vaccine <laughs> injection, like that kind of pain, like before it gets real bad. And and then like a little bit a stiffness in my neck too, but not anything noticeable. It's the arm that hurts. I don't know. It's weird. I'm also not used to going to specialists for much of anything. I suffer through a lot of stuff on my own, sadly. thread is kind of short. I'm trying to keep my piece in frame and not hit things because I have my like clamp black light like right here off to my side so I'm, it's not usually there during stream so I'm trying very very hard not to hit it and uh, my webcam is zoomed is really close in right here in front of me. Jess, I have been dancing since I was a kid. Oh, injuries start young when you train hard. Oh, that makes sense. That makes sense. Blue Feather drops a single red velvet cupcake with a Dutch chocolate cream cheese frosting into everyone's hand. Yes! It's like he knew. We all need a dessert and, and Blue Feather came came with <laughs> came with some. Awesome. That sounds delicious actually. I knew. Knew ahead of time. It's dessert time. It sounds amazing. Come on, beads. Do your thing. So far, this piece has been a stream only piece. It's probably the only piece I've made. That's been a stream only piece. I think the only one I can think of is uh, the piano hammer necklace, but I think I worked a little bit of that off stream. Not, not a lot, but enough. He made it with cherry brandy in the mix. Ooh, homemade cupcakes even. Amazing. <laughs> Jess got a shower. All right, Jess, we'll be here. Be here for a little bit. I, I'm definitely not gonna like have a super duper long stream today but I will make a little bit of progress on this guy at least I'm trying I've been I've been asleep all day so it's like man I just lost my whole day it's just weird and I know I need to sleep but like I just want to do things Usually when I have a day like that where it's just like, man, I just rested the whole time. That's that's just, you know, a clue to just do exactly that, to just rest the whole time and just take your day off. Just don't don't do anything super intense. Just take take the day off and just enjoy. Yeah, the brandy caramelized a bit near the bottom and made it extra good. Ooh, cherry caramel. Ooh, that sounds really good. I've never actually cooked with brandy, but 
I've always been intrigued. I don't think I've even tried anything anybody made with brandy. I guess I'm missing out. Come here, Boots. I'm trying to fly away. The good thing about when I'm beating at night in the dark and they glow is that when they go flying, I can spot them easily. <laughs> very, very easily. Just like you can't hide from me. <laughs> Gotta be careful baking with alcohol. I'm sure you can overdo it, right? Just gotta be careful with alcohol in general. It can burn. Oh no. You know, I've never tried. It's like I'm already not much of an alcohol person. It just it's just not something I think to consume ever. Every now and again, but and I'm mostly like when somebody else is offering, you know, or someone else brings some, asks ahead of time, hey, you know, can I bring alcohol while we hang out, you know, and they're like, you want one of these? And I'm like, yeah, sure. That's really the extent of my alcohol consumption is that. <laughs> Although I have put like rum in eggnog, so I have spiked eggnog every now and then, but you know, that's only once a year. I know how to make eggnog. Like, make it from like scratch, scratch? That's cool. That's pretty impressive. You have many talents, Blue Feather, that I'm just learning. Learning of your cooking endeavors. What else do you know how to make? From scratch. I have never had from scratch eggnog. That sounds amazing. You can brew my own rum. You can make your own eggnog. Which means you can spike your own eggnog. Rum and eggnog is pretty good. Cook and bake. Those are good art forms. Useful ones. Garden, hunt. So you're a... You'll be the survivalist among us all. I can grow flowers. I can't... I haven't tried to grow vegetables. Mostly because, you know, I live in Texas and the insane amount of watering it would take to keep garden like vegetable plants alive, it's just it's just not an imposition I want to put on the watering bill. And like we were in a drought for like so long here that it's like I don't think I want to actually do that. I think I'm good. You know, most of the gardening I do is perennials in the ground and then like I have a handful of things I buy for container pots, for containers, you know. Most of them end up being tropical and not, you know, <laughs> not the best fit for this environment. So my bougainvilleas are just like barely still alive. Like, they died. The entire trunks of my bougainvilleas both died down to the base. Same with, I think, like, a good chunk of my sage plants outside. Those actually had icicles growing on them, so I'm not surprised. But, uh, yeah. I grew up near the woods, so yeah, I can forage too. Neat. Can identify and discern most of what you can and can't eat. I know first aid and survival tips and the person you want with you in a zombie apocalypse. That 
Sounds like a plan. When I was a kid, I used to know how to change the tire on a bike. That was the extent of my <laughs> useful, useful skills. You know, I can I can spell autorhinolaryngology, but uh, that's not very useful. I can solve a Rubik's cube, which that one's kind of fun. I can just a three by three though, like the others take me effort because I haven't done them as often. I can fix the entire bike. Awesome. Yeah, I, would, I never was very good at bike chains replacements. Oh, come on. Okay, so now I think I kind of want to start the zig, or the zag in the other direction. I always forget how to do this because I only do it like when I'm working on this project and I haven't worked on these very often. So I think what you do is you, instead of adding a bead, you're coming out of, you're at a bead, you go into. Yeah, I think that's how that works. I know how to back off bears, wolves, and big wild cats, hit them in the nose with a long branch and throw rocks at them. <laughs> really? That sounds like it would aggravate an animal more than it would like make them go away, but you know, I've never tried it myself, so I don't plan on it anytime soon. But uh, if you say that it works, I'll trust you. Having no knowledge of it myself. No, scares the piss out of them, really. All right, good to know. Long branch and rocks. What if you don't have a long branch though? on this side. And then two yellows and then two pinks. Ooh. Yeah, that doesn't feel good on my neck. Especially if you yell and jump. Oh jeez. Nope, no. Nope. Maybe if I just leave the white in the middle, I can reach all of them easier. Roll on when going into the woods for any reason. Get a large, big, and long branch. <laughs> Use it as your walking stick and your protection method. Correct. And then I add my two white on this side. Is that right? Is that how that works? Yes. And then, and then I weave my thread from this end to the other end and create my step up on the other side. Yes, I'm remembering now. weird way to do it, but it's what well, works, so that's good. My thread is very short now, and I need to get a new one out. Exactly. <laughs> you know, I haven't been in any woods in a long time. The 
the woods and like where my mom lives are pretty much, you know, completely used by people all the time. So they're not, they're not wild, but like, yeah, my mom's land is very, very dense. It's a good idea to bring a pot and lighter, a fish hook and string too, so you can boil water and catch fish. Okay. Black light, I think it's dying. It's doing this weird, like, stop. It's like doing this. It's so weird. Okay, I am going to change the lighting because the sun is now starting to set. It was going down when I started. I'm going to do face camera first just because that one makes more sense. No. The window itself is like too light. Right light. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Yeah, that pulsing light is just very annoying. That's a lot better though. Then now the work surface. off and on again. No? I'm just gonna keep doing it. I didn't ask for a strobe light effect on my stream. It's so weird. Okay. This is the hardest part of a glow stream. It's gonna. Oh, wait, I already read that. I didn't know that that preview is what this will look like, which is good. Too dark. Brightness doesn't help. Unless you do this, maybe. No. Oh. Okay, I'm just going all over the place at this point, guys. Ooh. <laughs> 
nothing but darkness. That'd be hilarious. <laughs> I want you to see a little more than that, but that's kind of cool. But I don't want it super, super blue either. What if I do that and then like the gain's all the way down? No. That's lame. <laughs> I love the dark. Just insanely, incredibly dark. That's hilarious. <laughs> like the mega glow though that's awesome not quite what I'm a if I do if I do this darker this way but the gain higher Let's me adjust the white balance. Makes this dark. So lame. I don't do this often enough. Go with just the darkness. I think that's, that's 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 good. That's fun. Super dark. <laughs> you can see the lights back here. As I, as I turn the thing. It, I'll change it again. <laughs> I made it! Quite home size! Hello! I was just thinking about you. How are you doing? So I was messing around with settings and we're. Lowy. It's a little darker than usual, but it, it makes the beads stand out more, so that's that's kind of fun too. I don't know. Oh, I also need to add new thread before I keep going. I need to do that. How are you doing, friend? What are you up to tonight? I miss your face, and I love you. And I think this is my orange. I think this one is pink. Let's say goldfish, yes. Goldfish is the name of the thread I'm using. The color. I am incredibly good miss you oh incredibly good is amazing also i need to see if i have my i miss you too my bobbin do i even have a bobbin for this one orange white then no white sono silver sono yeah i do Ta -da. Orange, huh? It's my handwriting. I know. I'm doing okay tonight. My arm hurts from. I've been seeing a I've been seeing a chiropractor for the last couple weeks, and after the adjustment, he has me on a uh, tens unit for electrical stimulation for my back, but like it sends weird spasms down my arm and it makes my arm hurt so it's too high and it's just been frustrating today because it's the worst it's been even though like I know the unit wasn't set as high as other times it's just I, 
I think it's just still too high. And it hurts. And I'm tired. And I've been sleeping all day. And it's like, this is just my day off at this point. <laughs> I haven't got a lot accomplished, but that's okay. I'm trying to remind myself that I stopped working food service to, to make my body just slow down. And then my body slowing down is like, wait, what? We should be doing stuff. And so, like, it's, it's been a weird week. Like, I've also had a couple of, the last couple nights I had trouble getting to sleep because, like, physical panic, not mental panic, but, like, flight or, fight or flight, you know, heart beating, tummy doing weird stuff, kind of stress responses to nothing. It's like, body, I'm going to sleep. Like, what's your problem? But, like, my brain's fine. Anxiety is weird, also. It's been my day. <laughs> the last couple days. The other night, I thought it was because I had been playing Subnautica too late at night, which that game will make your heart race as well. It gets intense, but... Last night, there was no reason for it. It was like, okay, it's like 10.30, and I'm tired. I want to go to bed. And my body was like, nope. I'm like, fine. I'll go soak in the tub and read a book for a couple hours. Cut it out. And I was like, okay. And then I was reading Ursula K. Le Guin. I was reading the Orsinian Tales by Ursula K. Le Guin. I had two left to finish, and I finished those last night while I was soaking. I empathize with the anxiety. I am sorry. I also am sorry. Like, as of late, it's been it's been better than like when it first started. Oh my gosh, that was a nightmare of a roller coaster of a time. But uh, generally, it doesn't it doesn't act up too bad much anymore. But when it does, it's like, come on, I am doing things. Stop this. <laughs> So you just kind of have to let it do its own thing until it decides to behave. Oh. We out here. Who's out here? What? What? What do you mean? Yeah. Because I found that anytime I have a panic attack, whether it's physical or mental, because it can be either one or both for me. Um, I found that the best thing is to just go read a book. Read a book. Why am I trying to line this up with the other side? It's fine. I am doing this part, not the other side. That was the last row. I can't beat in the dark, guys. This is what you're here for. <laughs> like, with having anxiety, we out here. I don't know what you mean. I'm sorry. I know the panic attacks, too. Yeah, I was once already reading a book on the couch at one point. Just, this is like way back when it first started. I was just reading a book. I don't even know what book it was. It wasn't good. I can tell you that much. But <laughs> but after I got done with my chapter or whatever and, you know, I was going to get up and go do something, I, like, looked up at the wall. Literally, blank wall. It was white, you know, in the other room. It's just a white wall. And like my brain just like freaked one of the worst it's ever freaked. Just looking at a wall. It was so strange. I'm like, no, brain, stop it. What? And then like I spent the rest of the night like <laughs> soaking in the tub, relaxing, reading more of this book that I already didn't enjoy, just trying to <laughs> relax again. Because the act of reading is what calms my brain down. Not necessarily, it's just the distraction from what's happening. But, like. Reading a physical book calms my brain down. Just like, we are both having the same rough experiences. Okay, way out here. I didn't know this one. You're teaching me things. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
I'm sorry, because it's not fun for me. And I don't know how bad it ever gets for you, but it's got to not be fun for you either. Like, like what's, what's your weirdest panic trigger? Like, because mine was the blank wall. It just straight out of nowhere, no reason for it, just suddenly panic. And I'm like, but I'm looking at a wall. There's nothing there. <laughs> No reason. Because a lot, most of mine are like exhaustion, like sleep, lack of sleep induced, or going to bed too late, or staying awake too long without having a nap, and my body just has a switch that it just flips, and it's like, nope, we've had enough of this, we're going to bed now. Except you're not going to bed because you're worrying about your heart racing. So it's, yeah, that's, that's usually what mine does. Hey, I have successfully completed a ziggy zag corner point thing. <laughs> I don't know what this is called. I don't use this technique very often. Um, it is peyote stitch. It is a diagonal tubular peyote stitch. So you're working on the diagonal, going off in one direction or the other. Um, it is a peyote tube with weird corners. Um, but yeah, and it is peyote stitch. It's a long name for a specific type of peyote stitch, though. Well, it's an AAVE term, African American Vernacular English. Oh, my panic attacks happen at work mostly in anticipation of a rough afternoon with kids going ape shit at the library. Oh, okay. Gotcha. I'm learning so much, but also, man, it sucks that yours happen at work. Like, the amount of stress that working in coffee caused is what caused me to start having them in the first place. Like, having them at work has actually been kind of rare. Like, I had one last, last fall, roughly. It was just, like... Four o'clock in the evening? No, last summer, because it was still bright out. It was like four o'clock in the evening. I was just working, doing my thing. And like, just out of nowhere, you just get hit, you know? And it's like, this is dumb. There's no reason for this. And there was one that almost happened a couple, a couple weeks ago, but like, the guy I was working with, who's usually very quiet, um, he started... He started a conversation, you know, he doesn't, he doesn't start conversation very often, but he, but, well, you know, when he does, you know, I always like to hear what he has to say, and because he started talking to me, like, right as it started, it kind of prevented it from happening, I'm like, oh, thank you, Walter, for, like, speaking, this is great. Sometimes they happen on weekends, mostly Sundays, and it's in anticipation of going back to work. Oof, I'm so sorry. Do you have a lot of work stress or is it just like, just random, like, I don't know. Work while having panic attacks all the time. My regular kids can tell to the nice ones anyway and they always check up on these sweet babies. Aw. And does that mean that they know what it feels like? Cause that's way too early to start having them if that's the case. I'm so sad. Mostly I've just gotten to the point where if I feel anything weird or out of the ordinary, I'm just like, okay, we're just going to let this happen. I'll check on you later, brain, when you're not freaking out so much. And I, you know, try to get through whatever it is I'm doing, but, uh, or I just go and intentionally relax. Playing Stardew helps a lot, actually. If anybody, uh, ever is at home and has a panic attack, playing Stardew helps, um, distract your brain and focus on other things. I don't know if they have them too, they just know when I'm off, right? Some people are good at that though, like, you know, the longer I'm around somebody, the more I can tell when they're not feeling themselves. And I can just look straight at somebody and be like, hey, what's wrong? And they'll be like, wait, what do you mean? I'm like, oh, come on, don't, don't hide it from me, what's wrong? And usually they'll tell me what's up. 
because they're acting they're acting weird, you know, and it's not necessarily even just them having an anxious day. It's just like they're frustrated about something and just being like more quiet than usual or being a little more gruff than usual, you know. I've I've always been really good at like picking up when somebody's feeling off, like other people's emotions. Which is not, it, it's a good thing, but it's also, I don't know, like, I don't know. It's probably why barista work was so good for me, because I was just good with people, you know? But it's not good for me. Sometimes it is random, even if it's a slow stress day or nothing is happening. The kids who can tell when I'm panicking, I've known for three or more years. So yeah, okay, that makes sense. Yeah. I don't think our library even has, like, youth hanging out on a regular break, on a regular basis. I don't, I don't think. Goodness. That's sweet that they check up on you. That's amazing. I hope you've been a good influence in their lives as well. Because you have been in mine for sure. And I love you so much. Man. Why do we live so far apart? I went through beads I didn't need to go through. Hello. Come on. Oh, dang it. I have to unthread. I have all the youth. I try to be an influence. I don't know. Distance is dumb, bro. It is dumb. But, like, every now and then I... I have the stray thought of, you know, maybe I should move to Tennessee to be closer to Cali. And my brain's like, but your family's in Tennessee. I'm like, yeah, no, but Cali's in Tennessee. <laughs> she needs me more. <laughs> but then, like, the secondary thoughts that go along with that are like, well, if you if you did move back to Tennessee, then you'd eventually have to tell your family. And I'm like, well, yeah, and then they'd obligate all my time away for no reason because they've never actually tried before. And and like it gets in this weird negative brain spiral. And I'm like, no, no. We moved away for a reason, remember, brain? We moved away for a reason. We're not going back there. But Callie's there, says the brain. <laughs> like, yeah, maybe we can convince her to not be there. What did I do? Oh, I have to increase here. Whoopsie. Can move to Kentucky near the border because Springfield's like 15 minutes from the Kentucky border. Right, but have you seen who Kentucky elects to the Senate? I don't think so. No thanks. Not if that's going to be indicative of the whole state. No, thank you. But I did see an opening that was in, like, Floyd, Virginia, which is only, like, a seven-hour drive to Springfield. Because <laughs> what we need is to just go run away together somewhere better for both of us. All, all of us. Well, have you seen who Tennessee elects? Well, I, I don't know. Do I want to know who Tennessee elects? I haven't actually kept up with senators from Tennessee. <laughs> I know who Texas elects, and I just want to run away. I keep trying to vote them out of office, and it doesn't work. <laughs> I'm tired of Texas. I'm tired of the South, honestly. I don't want to live in the South anymore. You might get it, hate it here a lot. Don't blame me for staying away. <laughs> it's all fucked. I think everywhere is probably all fucked. 
I just want to live somewhere that has better art opportunities. I want to live somewhere where Ixo can have better just job opportunities in general. It'd be great. Because last, you know, we're both at the point of there is nothing left in this particular town for either of us. And so once once I give myself a bit of a rest after this last job, I am going to like look for places, other places. Big Mama, hello again. I was watching a friend of mine and saw you were on, so I told him I was going to bed, but I really wanted to watch you. I, everybody on Twitch is guilty of doing that at some point in time. You did not have to do that for me, but thank you. <laughs> Welcome back, how are you today? I also do that on occasion. Head out of one stream to go visit, to go visit another streamer. But usually, I'm at the point where I've been lurking for a long time and I just switch over without saying anything too. Also tired of the South. Yeah, Ixo needs a change. Ixo needs a, needs a change, that's, that's for sure. We don't know what kind of change, but we do, know, we do know he needs a change. Also, he's just lived here his whole life, so I think it'd be good for him to just move somewhere else where he doesn't have any family. I think that would be good for him. It was good for me. It was great for me. Just saying. I definitely like being road trip distance away from my family. Because, uh, yeah, that visit back to Tennessee to see all my family when I saw you last, Queen Home Slice, that was a, it went about as expected all the way across the board. You know, ahead of time, we were like, okay, this is what's going to happen when we see this person. This is what's going to happen when we see this person. This is what's going to happen when we see this person. And we nailed it on the head, every single one of them. So, like, because I saw you and my little sister on my first day back, because I hung out with you the whole day, and then we hung out with my little sister that evening, and that day was great. And then, like, the next day, I saw my other two sisters and their kids. And the whole time, my sisters didn't even, like, really have any conversation to share with me. And they were just, like, all concerned about talking to each other. And I'm like, yeah, nope, that, that checks out. So I hung out with the kids. I hung out with the, with the kids all night because I hadn't seen them in, like, so long that they all grew up on me. And then, like, a different day, like, my brother, my oldest brother refused to see me. I'm like, yep, nope, that checks out. And then, and then my other brother, um, he, uh, he and his wife, you know, were like, yeah, come over. And so we had a good couple, few hours with them as well, so that was fun. And then, like, my mom the whole time was great. You know, just the, just the neutral party in the, in the family shenanigans big mama I wanted to watch you because I'm working on my bracelets ooh fancy do you have photos to share links to share have you joined the discord yet I don't know but if you have not you are more than welcome to to share works in progress and all that fun stuff I'm sorry hope I was a brief respite Woo. I could have had all four days of just you and been fine Wow, your family doesn't deserve you. I am your family now. You have always been my family, woman. You have always been my family. <laughs> yeah, no, my... Yeah. It took a while, but, like, I just eventually got to the point where I'm like, yep, nope, they're lost. I'm awesome. They can suck it. <laughs> How do I link that? Um, if you like have photos on an external site like Instagram or like a blog or some Facebook links work, I think. 
but uh, yeah, if you already have photos of work that you have made in the past that you can link to, you can drop that in chat here. Uh, if you need to upload something first, then you can do that. Or you are welcome to also join the Discord and share photos in like the whips or finishes channel. Oh, I'm crying. Love you. Oh, don't cry. Don't cry, friend. It's on my Instagram. Yeah. You can drop a link in chat for us to look at look at your photos. That is more than welcome. You don't need any permissions for links in my channel. I am not to the point where I have to manage them yet. Just don't don't post anything not safe for work. That's all I ask. Nothing crude, just awesome things to look at. Now I need to stretch. Ah, my arm still hurts. Ugh. Stupid arm. They were fine this morning. Hello, I will be lurking as I tackle this giant pile of dishes. Hello, Fluffy Bear. <laughs> May your di giant pile of Mount Dishmore soon be conquered. Is that two beats? Yeah, that's two beats. <laughs> Sweating snowman. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, mostly Ixo deals with that struggle. Today, I have been like... Why has it been so rainy? I need to mow my yard. It's going to be a jungle when I can get to it again. So that's my house chore is the yard, which is a massive chore. And Ixo does most of the cooking and the dishes. And I do the laundry. And Ixo does the, uh, is, is better about buying stuff around the house, you know, like toilet paper or a can crusher or Propane for the grill. I say it's a fairly well balanced between us. It doesn't feel one way or the other, which is good. Cause I can I can do the yard every two weeks if I'm lucky and I can get away with it, you know. Whereas he is to do the dishes almost daily, but like the yard work adds up. A lot. Okay, I can. I'm a. I'm a tie in these threads from when I tied that knot because it is getting old. <laughs> She's getting old. Oh man, why did I do this to myself? I can't see. Come on. Come on, threads. Be nice. Ah. Say it's under bracelets by Kara for Instagram. I don't think I even have Instagram open right now. One sec. Because I don't want to like accidentally open someone else's page and it's not you, but if if you have a direct link, that's awesome. Kara is always a pretty name. I've always liked that name. Ever since I was in like fourth grade, I think we had a we had a girl named Kara. White Wolf Studios. Hello, hello. How are you today? I am working on my glow bracelet. My reversible dude. It is a long way from finished. Can you tell? <laughs> oh no! I dropped beans. <laughs> They're everywhere. 
Where's my jar? There it is. Good. You. Oh no. Oof. It's all right. This is this is like my glow project. I don't know how how long I've been working on it, but I've only worked on it on stream <laughs> so far. Um, this is definitely a very time-consuming technique for anybody who's like, I want to try tubular, diagonal tubular peyote stitch. I'm like, all right, that's a time commitment. Are you sure about that? Don't plan on selling it, okay? Okay. No! Because the only other piece I've ever made um, was a pair of earrings, and those took, like, at least four hours, and this has taken, like, much longer than that already. And it's not even, like, halfway done. <laughs> it looks nice, though. Thank you. Hey, my hair tie glows. Woohoo! Wasn't expecting that. Okay. <laughs> but, yeah, I want it to be a bangle that goes over, you know, the thickest part of your hand here. So it's definitely going to take, like, at least nine inches worth. But I'm zigging up and down and up and down and up and down, too. So it's definitely going to be a minute. It's going to be a, be a hot minute before this is done. So I'm probably going to go all the way down to here for this zigzag before I go back up again. So I'm changing directions a lot. Doing a lot, a lot of direction changes, which probably doesn't help. Not sure how to show a link to my Instagram. Um, you can always copy and paste. Like, where's my? Oh, I do have Instagram up. Oh, now that I have it up, I can go ahead and search you. One sec. Bracelets by. One, two, three, four results. But according to the spelling, which is all one word, it would be this account. Is Kara Smiley correct? I don't want to show if it's not correct. Yes, okay. One sec. Go, guys. These are big mama's pieces. Boop. Get acrame bracelets. Man. I'm still no good at macrame. Look at that display. You've done a lot, goodness. All the colors, all the Harry Potter colors, military colors, cancer support colors. Fancy. I hope you have been successful at your events. I know that they are a lot of work. Macrame is also black magic to me so far still. I have not managed yet, not yet managed to make it work. Although I don't have the right materials either to make decent pieces, so that kind of doesn't help. Need to weave through. I'm gonna weave through the yellow beads because I can see them. You know that helps. <laughs> I'm tying in my threads, guys. Oh no! I lost it. I lost the thread. Okay, 
My black lead is kind of behaved. It's still strobing a little bit, though. The, the big bar one above my desk. It was like flickering real weird earlier. Maybe I've just gotten used to it at this point. All right, so there we go. Cutting the other end off. working thread threaded again. I know this piece has been kind of fun. It's just, just definitely one of those I like to work on but I know I'm not going to get anywhere very fast at all. Like at all. Like I've only I've only gotten like this much overdone this stream. Like <laughs> it's a slow slow going slow process. Big mama. Well, love, I am going to bed. All right, have fun making your beads. I will see you soon. Yes, I will. I will be back Tuesday for sure. I'm still trying to figure out what's going to be best for me for like a new stream schedule. I don't know. I'm thinking probably just be best not to schedule anything on Monday, Wednesdays while I am going to see the chiropractor on a regular basis just because I have been so sleepy afterwards like I almost didn't do this stream I almost like backed out last minute but since I had said I was going to here I am but in future it's probably going to be best for me to only stream on like Tuesdays and Thursdays instead I would say Saturdays too but that's a little ambitious because I want to do farmers markets again and I don't want to wear myself out so I'm thinking Tuesday, Thursday. I don't know if Thursday would be a regular stream or a glow stream. I want to say a regular stream. I don't know. I don't know yet. I don't know. More than likely Thursday would be a regular stream and glow streams would still be kind of like an every now and then surprise kind of deal. Because I have a really hard time just in general being social at night. I'm a lot easier, a lot better at being social in the morning. Like, as far as me being the one doing all the talking. Like, as far as being the streamer, I have a harder time at night than I do in the day. Like, I will interact with streams that are happening at night as a viewer, but I don't. It's a lot harder for me to be the streamer at night than it is during the middle of the afternoon, which is when I usually stream. Don't know. Don't know. I'm just trying to get back to a new normal, a uh, what is life without the stress of food service insanity going on in my life because I've only known that for so long that it's just weird. Like, I just, I just, I find myself at times being like, I should be more stressed out than I am. Like, what's going on? There's no, like, over, over abundance of stimulation going on here at my house. Like, there's no weird beeping sounds or machine whirring sounds like just machinery just just running just being on you know so like there's no ovens beeping or there's no like steam wands like <laughs> making noises the whole time so it's like my house is generally a lot quieter I'm like what is this what is this nonsense you know yeah. and i've always been the type of person that will that will always have like a show on in the background as I'm doing stuff around the house. So that's that's not really any different. Oh, I needed, how did I go through both beads? Okay, no, I didn't. Okay, I needed to only go through one. 
So, like, I've always had, like, background noise shows and streams and, like, YouTube videos or music or something playing that, you know. You kind of have to where I live because our neighbors are real loud. They're the loudest people in the block. And I live on two dead ends, so I get, like, the grandparents on one side and the grandkids on the other. So we always have sounds going on anyway, but it's not like the weird mechanical machinery or like the nitrous, like that nitrous cold brew machine was like, nitro cold brew machine was just like, it would thunk and then it would like run really loudly for a few seconds and then it would like go back to just normal baseline. I was just like, that thing is loud. But if you combine that with steam wands happening and ovens beeping at the same time, it was just like a cacophony for a little tiny corner. I just didn't, like I, I knew subconsciously that, you know, getting away would be a quieter time in general, but I just, every now and then I'm like, there should be more sounds happening. <laughs> Cause that, this last place, I didn't have to wear a headset, so there were already fewer sounds, which is nice. Don't work with a headset, guys, if you can help it. It's a nightmare. Fluffy bear! I feel you about the not being able to function well at night as far as being a content creator goes. How did it go last night? Because I tried, because I was, I was sleepy when you, when you started streaming, but I wanted to say hello. And I tried to go to bed shortly after that, and then, like, my body started panicking. Just, just like, residual stress panicking, and so I ended up just reading in the tub for a couple hours. Not a couple hours, the water doesn't stay warm that long, but, like, an hour or something. A couple of short stories. <laughs> I think I'm going to have to cancel my stream tonight, because I just can't today. I feel you. I almost didn't show up to this one. Nighttime's hard. Did you quit your jab? I did quit my jab. Finally. There were lots of things wrong with it. It was it was mismanaged and the grocery the grocery store I was working in because I was working at the coffee shop in the store that was a licensed Starbucks was a it was my first food service job, and now it's my last, woohoo. Um, but it's just gone downhill over time. It got acquired by Albertsons several, several years ago. But when I first started, it was, it was much more friendly, much more, like, I don't know, homey. And now it's just very much corporate, don't care kind of attitude going on in the whole place in general. You know, so it was just a combination of factors. And, like, just my body can't take food service anymore. I just can't do it. The repetitive motions just hurt, which is why I've been seeing a chiropractor lately. Just been mixed results. It's been good, but I don't like the e-stimulation because the settings are too high. I was only on for, like, 45 minutes. I have been working myself so hard lately. I couldn't stay awake. I feel ya. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't work yourself hard, okay? You can't get everything done in a day. I can't either. Like, I was grumpy earlier because I've slept most of today. And then Ixo was like, well, you probably needed it. And, you know, just hearing that from someone else is like, that's the same thing I tell other people. <laughs> you probably needed it. Why does this one feel like it's so much further ahead than the other? I know. What do you think of the bracelet? It's definitely glowy. <laughs> Dude, food service is awful. Very much agree. Have you worked it before? Why are we never nice to ourselves? I try my best to be nice to myself. Um, the reason I got stuck this time, because I left food service on May 7th of 2018. I also left it May 7th of this year. <laughs> Coincidence that? I don't think so. Um, didn't even realize till the day of, actually, the significance. How are the beads different colors on each side? Because <laughs> it's two layers. I'm, I'm working in a, in a weird little tube that lays flat. 
And so it's two layers of beads, it's not one layer. So it looks like that on the cross section. Oh, okay, how? Yeah. But yeah, I left food service in 2018. Um, it was, it did not end well. I was working at corporate Starbucks at the time. I, long story short, I fell for a scam. Did not trust, like because of some distrust between me and my manager, my, my store manager at the time. Decided not to go back in anymore because this was three years of frustration that had just come to a head. Was a good decision. Was a great decision, actually. It's probably that the six months afterwards where I wasn't, you know, where I was only self-employed was like, it's the six months where I found Twitch. I gave myself a lot of time to heal. I learned how to, you know, manage my residual back pain. My back actually started feeling a lot better after I left. Um, it's cool. It is cool. Thank you. Um, six months later, I ended up getting a small, like, retail job only a couple days a week. A nothing burger of a job, really. Got paid really, really well to do lots of nothing. It was okay for, for a while, like all jobs are. But this particular boss, I had to, like, she wasn't interested in actually running a business she was interested in the idea of having a business so she she had weird drama things happen and wasn't running her business well and it, it was it was starting to be a sinking ship real fast and so I had to like find a way out and then finding a way out I made the easy choice of going back to food service and then I've just kind of been stuck there again ever since and regretting it So I'm not making that mistake again. Don't make the easy choices. Don't get stuck in food service because it's the only thing you know how to do. It, it's just this weird, food service is a revolving door, but it's like a prison of your own making too for each person who's stuck in it. So I didn't learn my lessons well enough and I got it hammered home this last year. So I'm taking better care of myself overall now. That starts with chiropractic care. I've always done stretches anyway. I'm untwisting, but look at that. Whoa, motion blur. That's great. I've always done stretches ever since like my back started hurting before, back when I had health insurance and was going to a doctor. But now I'm just trying to get some corrective help and preventative help so that it doesn't happen again. So that's the biggest reason I'm stepping away from food service is number one, health. Number two, mental health. <laughs> number three, I've done my 10 years of service. Can I get out now? Um, I've actually done 11, maybe 11 and a half. I've lived here 14 years, so if you got another job or just going to live off savings for now, that second one, I have a hair stuck in my piece. I think it's one of mine, but I can't see it. <laughs> uh, oh gosh, so glad you're taking care of your back. Yeah, yeah, my back is important. It is, it is more important than any job because I only have one spine and I need to take care of it. And I don't need to end up arthritic with all sorts of surgery replacements like my mom has because she wasn't able to take care of herself, you know? Um, yeah, I have a pretty decent uh, emergency savings, which is good. Most of it will be going to the chiropractic care, so it's not as nice a savings as it's, you know, it looks like on paper, but... <laughs> It's good enough to start searching. Uh, we want to move somewhere better. And so after I give myself like a week or two or of rest, I'll be, I'll be hunting, hunting the job listings countrywide to find a better place to live than here. Better for us. Like this place is fine. It fits, you know, just the basic white bread demographic of cheap place to raise your kids. 
that's that's the biggest reason anybody ever needs to to live here is because it's a cheap place to raise your kids and it is aside from that there's not a heck of a lot to do it's dry it's hot it has a college and an air force base and those are the most interesting things about this place It has regular food chains like everywhere else. The only places people flock to when they open are restaurants. And quite a few restaurants open up and then close and then new ones open up and then close and... So, yeah, that's... Yeah. The art scene has had some stops and starts and stops and starts and stops and starts and it's just a repetitive cycle of ooh this was good until it turned into a pub crawl ooh this was good until it turned into a pub crawl ooh this was good until people decided to get drunk all over the place <laughs> that's the art scene here people only show up if there's booze involved I know that that's the case a lot of places but I would rather speak to sober people However, drunk people who have spilled stuff on my displays in past events, not, not here, but other places, have ended up buying like $80 purchases, which has been nice. I did have a personal friend of mine who at one of these art walks was very drunk. She was also with somebody, I think, so that was good. But she was very drunk and she was asking me how stuff was going and I just gave her the kind of the kind of shrug that means I haven't really made any sales. And she's like, oh no, no, I need to buy this necklace from you. I'm like, no friend, you must save your $25. Do not drunk purchase from me. If you still want it tomorrow, let me know. But I'm not going to let you drunk purchase from me. <laughs> she would have done it too. And I'm like, no friend, you can give me a hug. This was like years, a couple years back. You can give me a hug and and you can go on your way and you can you can have this necklace when you are sober needless to say she did not she did not message me about the necklace and did not end up with a drunk purchase for me which is good yeah I don't think it's something she would have worn anyway like I I I haven't seen her wear that particular style, you know. A lot of my stuff is right up her alley, but that particular piece that she was trying to drug purchase was not not something that fit within her usual wardrobe. It was probably for the best. It was. Uh, that said piece did end up going to somebody who did choose it on purpose. I did an art trade with a different friend of mine. Got some um, thank you cards from her, some just just art cards from her and she got a piece or two from me and she picked that necklace for herself I didn't get to talk to her very long the other day but I did see her pass by at the art walk on Thursday yeah it was it was for the best it was it was fine <laughs> hey maybe I am making more progress than I think I am I need, I need like a flat surface. I think I need another row. No, we've got a few more rows before it hits the same point here. So I want them to line up. I want these two points to line up, so I think I need a couple more rows before I get there. I don't know if this one lines up. See, I, I decided early on that I wasn't going to do math on this piece, but it's a geometric piece, so <laughs> yes. Oh, you went to an art walk recently? I'm jelly. Um, um like I said earlier. The art walks in this town are actually pub crawls. They're actually just, just reasons for people to get drunk. And that's exactly what they did. 
but it was very, very terrifying because nobody was wearing a mask and our numbers have since gone up. I wish I could sell at a farmer's market, but I feel like it'd be weird. Why? Why would it be weird? Um, a lot of farmer's markets are happy to have artisans, actually, which is nice. Um, but yeah, somebody who does prints and stickers and cards and small things like that, I think would go over pretty well. I think it would depend on the farmer's market, too. Like, ours definitely prioritizes people who grow and who make, obviously. Um, there's a farmer's market in Denton, and it's not called a farmer's market, it's called a community market because they acknowledge that artisans are people worth representing as well, which is kind of cool. And I think the community market would be something worth going to if we ended up go moving to Denton. And it's just one of the cool ways I've seen that kind of small weekly event be more inclusive of other other people who create and want to sell their work locally. But uh, our farmer's market has like boomed because of the pandemic. Just people trying to make that extra income, you know? Uh, that's it. No one really wears masks here either, but thankfully not a lot of drunks. Um, yeah, there aren't too many people that were like just blatantly drunk, but you know, you could definitely count more beers than mask wearing. That's for sure. That is for sure. Yeah, there, yeah, that was, like, I knew that there would be more people unmasked, but I didn't think it was going to be almost everybody, and that was scary. Just the level of, why are you out? I know it's hot out, and that's not a reason to not wear one. <laughs> Why are you here? Go home. That's awesome. I think the local artist guild kind of has kind of monopolized the art fair thing. What do you mean? Please elaborate. I want to learn what the art scene looks like in other places. I also don't remember. I don't know what part of Arizona you live in, but I know you live in Arizona. Art guild. I sort of live in a Trump town, so that tells you what you need to Oh, jeez. So, so your artist guild is, is full of boomers who are resistant to new ideas, kind of like where I live. I also live in a Trump town. It tells, tells you quite a lot about what it's like here. Need out. Yeah, our art association here, it's really, really awkward because I've tried to join. I have joined like twice in the past. It's, it's like a monthly membership thing. You pay, well, no, it's a yearly membership and then you pay like monthly if you want to be in the gallery. I could care less about galleries with the foot traffic that this downtown makes, it's definitely not, uh, it's just a sunk cost for me. And although, like, one of the few times I did put my work in the gallery is how I kind of gained a collector. So there is that. I'm not gonna say it's entirely pointless, but for me, it's just, I don't sell 2D work so the opportunity to have my wall exhibit my work exhibited on a wall is just it's just not it's not the same for me not knocking it for somebody who does need that but it's not the same for me the art association is mostly mostly 2d artists photographers painters etc almost all of them are are boomers almost all of them are older that is not indicative of the entire art scene in this town, just the association. Uh, the times that I have joined, I was the youngest person there. And being the youngest person in the room at 30 is kind of weird, you know? I'm 32 now. So this was like back in 2018, 
2019, 2018, 2019, somewhere in there. Like, I was 29, I was 30, somewhere in there. Being the youngest person in the room at 30 is just a weird feeling when you're trying to surround yourself with artists. Like, it's just, it's just weird. I just didn't like it. It's kind of been that way almost all art associations I've been in anyway, or been near. But, like, I was a teenager at those times, you know, that made more sense, but, ugh, I don't know. All right, let me catch up. I live in northern Arizona in Prescott. I have heard the name. The Granite Mountain Artist Guild has fairs all the time. I actually stopped by a booth I had never seen before this last one and bought an original from a cute little man who's been painting for 30 years. It seems so friendly. It made me want to join. Oh, maybe. Oh, so it's a fair run by the Art, art Guild. Oh, those are nice. Like, juried shows like that, there was... Uh, Taka in Tennessee, which is the Texas Arts and Crafts Association, which is those fairs, all the exhibitors are members of of the association. Those are nice. OMG, I feel that. I am in a small gallery here, and I don't really sell anything, but I'm just trying to get my name out there locally, which is kind of how you have to do it. Lots of boomers here as well, and college kids. Very strange mix, but mostly boomers, yeah. I had a while back, like after I had stopped going to the association meetings again, I've tried several times, I've tried so many times. Um, I had one of like the president at the time and like one of the other ladies come up to me and ask me, this is while I was at, you know, a food service job that was across the street from the association gallery. Um, up to me and ask me hey what would it take for, like to get college students engaged in the art association we need you know they're aware that they need the younger generation but they have no idea how to go about it I'm like wow you've heard about Prescott that's cool somewhere in my memory bank banks I know that that is a place in Arizona yes I don't know why I can't tell you why but it is yeah I've heard of the town that's cool <laughs> It's a place. I know it exists. <laughs> hey, I think one more row and I'll be at that same point. Because I want that to be like the widest point is from here to here. You know, I don't want to go any more than that, but all the zigs in the bracelet can just be different. Um, but yeah, she was, they were asking me like, what would it take? I'm like, hello, have you tried having meetings in the evening? Not at noon on a Wednesday? How about at like five or six or seven o'clock on an afternoon? Ugh. Have you tried, you know, letting them be sponsored by a member of the association, you know? Have you tried letting them join for like a really cheap fee or no fee for the first like six months or something, you know, just incentivize kids to want to be part of something. And to the best of my knowledge, there still aren't college kids in the association. I wasn't in the association when I was a college kid. I knew about it, but like, it's, it's just an old gang kind of mentality and feeling to it. And I have met a couple of decent artists who, who were part of the association. I don't know if either of them are now, but both of them are super fantastic, great people. And one of them has just reactivated her Instagram and just kind of gone from there. There's also a lot of hipsters here, like true hipsters. Very fun mix. Oh, neat. OMG, the meetings of the Artist Guild are on Friday mornings. Like, what? See? Yes, yes, please elaborate on your feelings about like what. <laughs> it's like, is that because you are not a morning person? Is it just because it's a weird, inconvenient time and you'd rather go to a meeting in the evening? Like, what is it? Because me, I still have a terrible time waking up early. Can't do it. 
just permanent night owl for whatever reason. Obviously, I'm live now. Like, I'm not usually this social at night, but I am usually awake beating at night. A lot of that is just forced habit from working as late as I have. Oh my gosh, who is reading? Beating Dream, hello, hello, hello. Welcome on in, Raiders. How are you doing today? What were you working on tonight, Beating Dream? Or were you having an auction? I don't know. I don't know. Hello, hello. HK, HK Adams. Ooh. Hello, welcome. Welcome in, welcome in. How are you doing? <laughs> Sheena Thorpe, hello and welcome. Welcome in. What are you guys up to? What were you working on tonight? Hi. I have lurked in a few of your streams. I haven't said hi very often, but I do know that you are within driving distance of me. I live, I live north, <laughs> north. I live in Wichita Falls, and and I know you're, in, I know you're in Dallas, buying stuff. Gotcha, gotcha. Oh man, fancy virtual sales. That's gotta be an interesting way. It's gotta be an interesting way. Okay. Oop, I've got the follow. Aso, Aso Ival, Aso, tell me if I'm saying something wrong. Thank you for the follow. Thank you for beating my friend. Welcome to the Bee Box. I am Vanishing Pearl. I go by Pearl here on stream. I'm not. I don't usually stream this late, but when I do, I I bead with luminescent beads. They glow under a black light. Ooh, awesome! Come visit sometime. I I have. I lurk sometimes, but I'm not very social at night most of the time. Today is kind of an exception. Fun sale, also shenanigans, and rabbit holes. Ooh, sounds like every beater. Hi, Pearl. Hi, Sheena. Hello, welcome. Um, but yes, I bead with luminescent beads at night. Uh, these are Delicas. The orange ones are Toho's. So very cool. Yeah, so capturing the beads this late at night is kind of more of a motion blur kind of thing. The beads aren't always going to be in focus. Uh, the settings are a little hard to do but I think it's fun. This piece is a reversible diagonal tubular peyote stitch piece. Um, I'm zigzagging kind of at random. I'm not really counting until I get to the end, so it's going to be kind of a freeform yet geometric piece. <laughs> you said high enough that we knew to follow you. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, it is going to be a bangle. It's going to be a seamless bangle, no clasp. Um, this is just fun for me. It's my favorite type of jewelry to wear is bracelets, specifically bangles. Uh, so I'll have to make it wide enough to go around this part of my hand, you know? Uh, there is quite a lot of work to be done on this. Um, in the background, you will see this is my radioactive uh, pizza minder, actually. It's pepperoni pizza, but done with luminescent yellow beads for my cheese color. <laughs> I didn't find out until after I started glow streaming that it glowed. So that that was that was a nice surprise. That was a nice surprise. Pretty, thank you. How are you guys today? Do you have any projects on the go? If you create things, if you game, tell me what you game. <laughs> That's funny. Um yeah, yeah. I, I call it my radioactive pizza. Because uh, eating something that luminous would kind of be dangerous. <laughs> I need to do like a hazardous waste barrel at some point. That's that's one of those suggestions Ixo has given me. Ixo is my husband for any of you who are new to my channel. I do have a few other projects that glow that I can take the time to show off. Let me get them all out. Not all beads glow. Uh, usually beads that are labeled as neon or luminescent or uh, Bondelli finished beads actually also glow. You see how many glow projects I have in here? I think just a couple. Not many. Not many. But yeah. Also, I bought I bought thank you cards earlier. And they glow. <laughs> I was running out of thank you cards for stuff I need to mail off, and like it looks like all the patterns light up, which is nice. Unexpected, unexpected. I love it. Yes. 
HK Adams finally finished my Zoom project that I've been working on each time we have our bi-weekly Zoom. Who has bi-weekly Zoom and is this the Bead Society and do I need to join? Because I have never managed in my life to actually find a Bead Society. And I have been beading for 19 years and I am very lonely. <laughs> this is why I'm on Twitch, guys. <laughs> Sheena, yeah, they're always telling us not to eat the beads, even if they are pizza. <laughs> Yay, glowing things. I'm going to show all of my glowing things off. So I am a massive nerd. And my one and only S dragon that I have left to work on is Trogdor. It's a little hard to see. But the sphere glows and his consummate Vs for his side scales glow. Uh, also his eyes and his nose because the thread is white, not because the bead glows. Um, and then his tail spikes. Yay, glowing things. It is beating dreams. Join us. One of you? I can be one of you. Send me links. Somebody send me a link. <laughs> so I can look this up later. I'm, I'm happy to do, to do things with other beaters. I have been occasionally doing um, Discord, Discord, uh, classes with some of the community members I've met here through Twitch. I also have check press leave gears and these, I think they were uranium glass because I did not expect them to glow. They were just, these leaves are so hard to find anyway. I don't, I, I bought them at, dang, which bead store did I buy them at? I don't remember. I don't go to Dallas often, but when I do, I look for check press leaves. And this and the matching earrings happen to glow. And that's all the ones I had of that color. I'm like, yes! Look at it. I still have to finish the necklace. <laughs> but yes, thank you for the follow, Sheena Thorpe. Thank you for beating my friend. Welcome to the bead box. Cool, cool. If you whisper me with your email, we will get you added to our list. Ooh, fancy. All right, let me do that. I don't do whispers very often. Also because the notifications never show up on my phone. Make sure I have your username spelled correctly. I'm going to do it right now so I don't forget. I also need more practice with Zoom in general. About to start eating beads, so I'm going to head where the food is. Have a wonderful night. Have a wonderful night yourself as well, Beading Dream. I feel special then, yes. Yes, yes, we're all special. All beaters are special. All right, I am going to quickly do a shout out for those of you in chat who have not been to Beading Dream's channel. If I can spell. Go give them a follow, check them out, see what they're up to. I need to do more of that myself as well. We are all special, all the beaters. All the beaters are belong to me. Um, there aren't very many of us on Twitch. I have found quite a selection of them though, I will not lie. Most of them have found me. <laughs> One way or another and this is this is my last like low piece they are little little tulip shaped beads that i have put around a gear again black light streams not the best to showcase work that doesn't glow but great for things that do and just these are blue and green in real life and they they all glow this this beautiful white it's so cool 
which that's a piece I started on stream like forever ago and, and I just I've never finished it. Weirdo, weirdo that I am. Fluffy Bear, you can always start your own beating club. That's what my Discord is for. It is my own beating club, guys. Guys, join the Discord. If, you, if you're comfortable joining Discords and you want to show off all your works and see me off stream and interact all the time and nerd talk about beads all the time, I'm, I'm here for you. Oh no. <laughs> you love all the glowy beads? I love them too. Oh, do we need to nerd out about the types of beads that glow? Because I can totally run through all the ones that I have that do. With other beaters on board? Yes. I'm gonna do that. Okay, not all the beads I have that glow. That would take forever, but the coolest ones that glow, if I can find them. Being told I should also go home since I'm still at work. Oh no. I'm so glad we got to raid you tonight and we would love to have you on Zoom. I would love to try something new in, in the realm of beadwork and uh, joining virtual bead society Zoom call. What, what are the right words? I need the right words. Um, sounds great. You said radioactive glass earlier. Is that safe? Um, uranium glass. Uh, it is glass made like usually, if I remember right, like between like the 50s and like the 80s maybe. My, my memory, memory is a little fuzzy, uh, but it's glass that has trace amounts of uranium in it. Um, it is generally safe. It's generally safe to eat off of, but it does light up under black lights. Good night, all. Good night, HK Adams. Thank you for beating here for as long as you were. That is amazing. I will, I'll beat around eventually. I don't stream very often. I always stream on Tuesday afternoons, roughly between 2 to 3 p.m. Central Standard Time is when I start. I usually go till about 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. I'm looking for something. <laughs> I'm looking for glowy things. Um, and I'm thinking about also streaming on Thursdays. My schedule has opened up recently. <laughs> yes, the puns are forever. You're in the right place if you like puns. And if you don't, oh no. I have super duos. Are these the green ones or the yellow ones? These are the green ones. Uh, super duos that light up. They're so great. Um, but yeah, I'm thinking about Thursdays also being a day stream. Oh, those were the green ones because these are the yellow. Yellow and orange. Ta -da. I have been buying lots of neon beads lately. Not lately, but every now and then. And then I have some sequins that glow. Yes, Tuesdays, probably Thursdays, starting next week. Uh, glow streams are still just kind of random and when I'm feeling like it, uh, like I said earlier in stream, I'm not very social at night, so it's harder for me to stream at night. These are, they glow kind of like pinkish orange, but they are more of like a fuchsia color in, in daylight, which is kind of cool. And I've got some weird plastic ones. These are the kind of things people use to like. I, I took them off of decorated fruit. This was a this was a styrofoam fruit kind of thing, but I took them off of that because I like them. They're acrylic. They're they're just little plastic squished, like if you squished a bicone, basically. Little like cushion thing. And this guys. This is the only white I have that glows. See it. That's it. That's it. That's the only white I have that glows. No white beads glow unless they're plastic. This is, these are ginkgos. These are a Bondelli finish, which I know is kind of new. Um, I haven't tried buying any of the new pastel beads yet in the Bondelli finish. I have um, some super duos that do light up though. Where is my little container? So I have some green ones that in the Bondelli finish that light up. So I am pretty confident that the entire line does as well. So these are green. They don't show as well on camera as they should, but they they kind of glow a kind of minty color. They are emerald in daylight. 
So they're a darker green in daylight and they glow a lighter green at night. Uh, the Bondelli is, like I said, the only white I have found so far that is glass that glows. Acrylic does, of course, but I'm really, I'm really excited to use these. I'm really, really looking forward to it. I request to see my Turtwig bomb. Do it glow? It do not. <laughs> what is Bondelli finish? This is a good question. Let's learn. I don't know. I just know it's the name of the finish. It's a matte finish. Looks like Sherbert. A lot of times when you're looking for like how things are made with beads, you get a lot of uh, just item listings. You don't you don't get a lot of like history or science stuff. But I'll just quickly show you the Google search results. It's gonna be bright. Sorry. But yeah, they are pastel. So these are the same style of bead I have, the ginkgos. But they're bright pastels. I imagine all of them would also glow under black lights. So they're a matte finish. Which matte finishes... I don't think I've had any other beads that... Yeah, no, no. The, the, old, the neon super duos did. But yeah. They're just pretty. I like them. They're colorful. They look nice. That looks like it's almost under black light itself, just in that photo. So maybe. Maybe they all glow. We'll find out eventually, one day. And also, let me show you Turtwig. If I can find him in the dark. I feel like bead sculptures would be so cool. They are. They're real fun to make. Um, like, like my Trogdor here. He'll be cool if I can make myself finish him because I don't like beaded dragons. Tartwig is coming along. Um, you have seen as much of him as I have done, but he is definitely on my priority list of projects to finish, to work on. Oh look, my crate glows. Hi. Both of them do, actually. The other one glows bright green. So part of that glow is like from the computer screen, but it's also like from the black light. I have the light mode up right now so you can see. He's, he's very dark. It's hard to tell. Fluffy, why didn't you ask me this during the daytime? <laughs> you can see all the little fuzzies from the fiber fill though. <laughs> Maybe beads on wires. Yeah, that that that, that makes good sculptures too. Haha, <laughs> my bee. Your bed bee. Bed bit turtwig. I figured out a couple of different ways I want to try to make his head. Yeah, it's it's just dark. Sorry, you're not getting a lot here. <laughs> and turning my light on will just overexpose everything. Cause like if I try that with my outlight. Oh wait, there we go. Yeah, no, that's not so bad. Usually it like overexposes everything when I try to turn the light on during a glow stream. But yeah, I'm, I'm pretty happy with how I managed to get that little stripe on his back because it does look raised. Um, and his back be one color and the bottom be another color. Um, I'm probably gonna do some little peyote stitch stumpy legs the legs will be easy. I'll probably do that next. And then like his head, I'll try to do in that there's a tutorial on how to do a beaded pair. I think that would work with just the shape of the pair itself is similar to the shape of his head and I think that would work. And if not, there's another tutorial I'm interested in following that shows how to do a face for an animal. Like, actually a face for an animal. But I'd have to modify it a little to make it the right shape. 
I think the head shape will be uber tough uh, with all the all the details and the sprout. The sprout will be easy though. That'll be the easy part. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to working on him when I have a minute. Ta-da! All right, so back to the glow. And I was I was on Catherine's stream earlier today, watching watching her make your little ducky into a crochet plushie, and that's so cool. I'm also gonna change this music because that's a little. No. We're going we're going to find synthwave, which matches our work anyway. There you go. Synthwave it is. Ain't no rush. I know. Same. Same, ain't no rush on, on the illustration, drawing, painting, digital painting. I know, Mr. Kazoo's at work. Oh. Sad. How is, your, you said you're helping your grandmother, right? How is that? What are you doing for her today? Like, what is she having you do? And is it new and interesting from all the other things you've done before? that's just part of what I want. I think I just want to try something different. Because food service is just all the same. It doesn't matter what the job is, what the restaurant is, what the like coffee shop is, none of it. It's all the same. You, you know what you're getting into and it's just a shit show and it's just drama. Eventually the drama will catch up with you. And I just I just get tired of fielding other people's, like, drama. <laughs> also got hired to water plants. That's what I've been doing in the mornings. Oh, nice. Neat. How many plants? How many plants do you have to water? My goodness. Did help Grams in the afternoon though. She does septic system designs and soils. Oh, that's, I don't know what I was expecting, but that wasn't it. <laughs> Designing septic systems, you know, somebody has to do that. Somebody definitely has to do that. Especially for people who live out in the country and can't exactly hook up to, you know, sewer systems and such. Lots of plants, dude. So many. Thousands. I can only do a small portion in five hours. Oh my gosh. Is this at like a nursery or something? I know. She has such a weird job. <laughs> weird job or not, that's a different skill set. That's amazing. Is it interesting? Do you like? I, I don't know what she's having you doing, but are you like learning the process? Oh no, I think I've gone too far. Oh no. Oops. I just kept going, guys. I didn't think I was going to reach the end of this leg, and I did. Um, and now it's longer than the other one. <laughs> Oops. I am not frogging any of this. We're just going to keep going, and that's going to be the widest point now. It's from here to here. Oops. No wonder this bracelet doesn't get done fast. <laughs> the large home improvement store has lots of plants and right now, since it's spring, all the old ladies buy up plants like candy. That is true. I am one of those old ladies. Not old yet, but old at heart. 5,000 new plants got shipped in a few days ago. It's kind of crazy. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Heck, I would... That sounds like it's just right within your interest too, being the person taking care taking care of the plants before they go to their new homes. That's awesome. I've always wondered though, like if you work in a nursery like that, if it's easy to accidentally overwater the plants learning what Grams does, but I can't do exactly what she does because I need to be a registered sanitarian, which is a bachelor's degree. Gotcha. You know, that makes sense. That makes sense. 
is it a specific bachelor's degree or just bachelor's in general? Right in my interest, man, but I have worked at home for the past three years and I'm not used to the heat and standing for hours. I am dying. Oh no. I have never worked from home. That's just, that's just not something that's ever been part of my life. And so I think it'd be interesting to, to do that. You know, at least once. Well, that's not true entirely. I did have a remote job. I did work from home for a few months. I helped, like my official title was like assistant director for an arts and crafts show, like my favorite arts and crafts show. The last year it existed before it died because of drama, drama in the art world, of course. Um, <laughs> But uh, mostly what I did was I emailed, I emailed people that the director needed me to email. I did the tasks that she didn't have time for. I, you know, reached out to different places for advertising and for banners and for stuff like that. I was mostly, most of what I did, I was in charge of putting together the competition for the youth, for the youth kids all across the high schools in in the state reaching out to them and trying to get them to have students enter for for scholarship monies which was kind of cool or just award prizes monies um one of the schools from like where i live actually did join i got a bunch of students interested in signing up for the scholarship opportunities and being vendors from my own art department because i had done that in the past that's how i got involved with the show in the first place was as a scholarship student um it's they basically you know judge your body of work that you have presented and how you've displayed it and etc you know and it was it was just a really cool thing to have done as a college kid so I got like three or four students from here at the time to join in that which I thought was kind of nifty So that was my only like remote job. It was cool. I only got, you know, paid very minimum wage for it, but it was definitely a different experience from anything else I've done. I had a hard time with keeping myself on track though. I'd be better at it now, but at the time it was the first time I was like, uh, I don't know what to do with my days. You can't really overwater the plants here because the dirt dries out so quickly. Arizona. Arizona is hot. Okay, that's that is a fair point. That is a fair point. You specifically have to get a registered sanitarian degree. Makes sense, makes sense. Uh, sorry, it sounds like you have too much drama. I I think I'm a magnet. There are times where I think that I unintentionally cause it. I don't know. Cause, Cause you know what they say about people who say they had drama, they're the ones that cause it. And I'm like, oh, please don't let that be me. And if it is, I'm so sorry. I think I just see a lot of what's right or wrong going on around me and I'm like, no. And my brain dwells on stuff. How exciting the scholarship is for school. It was, yeah. Um, I don't know how they run it now because the year I was the assistant director was the final year of the show because like bankruptcy problems and like mismanagement of money from like the, the board who was running it. But at the time that I was a student, uh, it was like any other juried show, you submitted your work and you applied, but you applied under the student category. Um, one of the vendors who's been to that show a lot was at a show here and was telling me about it and I'm like an art show that does scholarships I'm in you know <laughs> um, so it's a Texas arts and education like Texas arts and crafts education foundation is is what it was the organization running it um, and 
So I applied, like I had already been doing anyway for other art shows. Um, you apply, you pay your jury fee. You, in this particular case, you applied as a student. And so if you got accepted as a student, you paid a decreased rate, a lower rate, than, you know, than the professional booths just as an incentive to get college kids to start trying to learn how to do this as a living or as an experience, you know, in, in the art world, you know, try to get the younger generations involved. That's, that's what it was. Um, but there were scholarships, you know, first, second, and third, X amount of money towards your college tuition, whatever. Um, and I got it. I don't think I ever got the scholarship, but it was the, the, uh, experience of setting up at the show and this is an art community like this is this is a community where people go to the shows to purchase art and that's that's what I learned over the course of doing it but no I did get a scholarship the second year I did it I didn't the first year but if you went the first year you were you were allowed two years as a student but if you got a scholarship, you got like a free booth for a third year. So the second year I got a scholarship. And so I got a free booth another year down the road. <laughs> yeah, it was weird. But yeah, it was fun. It was a good experience. I got to have a great art show at a discounted rate, which was fantastic. I got to make a bunch of friends. And acquaintances a uh, couple of whom I still touch base with every now and then not very often though it was kind of cool you did not miss the stream Sinsenoshi how are you doing today and welcome welcome back I have been live over two hours though I thought I wasn't even gonna make it this far fluffy oh, oh I found a book that I want to read it's called the lost apothecary ooh that sounds that sounds fancy. I have like a six month wait at the local library, which is a bummer. I wish we could just rent books on Google Play or something for cheap. I don't want to buy it, but what if I don't like it? That is totally fair. Six month wait? Who's the author? I feel like I've heard that title before. It's pretty cool, man. I wish I could have gotten an art scholarship. I got several actually going to school. Um, I started applying for scholarships when I was in my junior year of high school. I didn't even want to go to college before then, but I decided randomly that I was going to. And so that's when I started applying for scholarships. I, between my junior and senior year of college, I applied to 72 scholarships, applications, various essays, various reasons why, various submit your grades please, various transcript sending off and blah. I only got five so and all of the ones that I did get were local to where I lived or like within the state I didn't get any out-of-state scholarships I hardly didn't even I got one that was from out of county yeah holy poop yeah 72 and I only got five um, it is a full-time job applying for scholarships just saying but if you can manage to snag a few they can pay for your college education, and they did pay for mine. Uh, between that and FAFSA, they paid for mine. And also the fact that I came to a very affordable school and kind of got the education I paid for. Um, free bachelors, but yeah, not the greatest. Not the greatest education itself. It's okay. I, I, have, I have good and decent memories from my school. But yeah, I only got five. And then once I got here, I continued to look for scholarships. So I got scholarships like through the school and through different arts foundations around in the area. And then that craft show was one of them as well. So just by being vigilant the whole way through, that's how you get your scholarships. For anybody that needs tips, you know, just look in the town where you are. Specifically, look at your high school. Your high school, like, 
scholarships that are like must have graduated from such and such high school or high school in such and such county in such and such state those are the ones that are actually that you'll actually get like ones that are like national essay con contest you know but they're not really worth your time the ones that are like you know national arts endowment for the, you know national endowment for the arts kind of things like the competition is just so fierce that you're probably not going to get it you know if you have the time go for it but i i highly recommend just going for local stuff too late for me it's never too late it's never too late you can go to college whenever you want if you want if you don't then that's fine too if I had been smart, I would have gone to the community college, sorry, my ear itches, in Paris, Texas, and done bench jewelry so that I could have had some usable skills that people actually want. But it's never too late. If you still have an interest in doing something, now is a good time as ever. Also, doing something when you've kind of learned who you are as a person a little bit better is is a good idea too. Just just growing up in general kind of makes you learn who you are better. Like, if you had asked me when I was looking for colleges in the first place, are you going to also get a master in arts? I would have been like, oh heck yeah, I am. And now I'm like, that's a waste of time. I'm good. Done. Like if I'm if I'm really that determined to be in an art scene with lots of other people around, you know what I need? I need a makerspace. I need a makerspace where I can go in and there's a jewelry studio and I can just learn and I can just play and I can take workshops and I can advance the skill set or advance on the skill sets I already have. That's what I would need at this point in my life, just because maker spaces are more along the lines of what I'd actually want, you know? And also do a little teaching um, in the mix there as well. Ooh, how many maker spaces are there across the country? Like big old ones. Like I've, I've been to the Dallas Makerspace and that thing is cool, man. That thing is amazing. Just just looking at all the information on the walls and like going through like the class registry and it's just like, this is so cool. I just wanna paint. I'm also nodding off here, oh no. If you're sleepy, go to bed. You don't have to stay awake for me, I promise. know what a maker space is okay so um yeah then you don't have one um a maker space is basically the easiest way I can describe it is it's an art center or, or like hands-on center that has things like a woodworking shop. Sometimes it has like a machinery shop for like metal milling. Um, it has spaces for like digital art and for like sewing and fiber arts areas and jewelry making spaces. Um, it's a bunch of different places. It's a, it's a shared community space where people sign up to be part of it and are able to take classes or workshops or just have studio space. It's just a shared studio space for artists. Queen Home Slice said good night above. Oh no, did you? Oh no. Sorry guys, you're the same color. Queen Home Slice, I'm so sorry. I thought you were Fluffy Bear for a second because you're the same color pink. I did not mean for that to happen and I love you too. <laughs> I'm glad you could hang out for a bit too. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. But yeah, 
Thank you, Fluffy, for pointing that out. I'm sorry, friend. I love you. But yeah, a makerspace is basically a shared studio space where artists get to pool their resources not have to have their own like home studios for like heavy duty equipment but are able to like use it kind of like the studio spaces in an art department but it's open to the whole community and not just college kids does that make sense i hope that makes sense <laughs> Because we kind of, the closest one to me is two hours away. Lame. Yeah. The closest one to me is also two hours away. Like the Dallas Makerspace was really cool. More like two and a half. I guess we sort of kind of have one here, but it's more geared towards kin kids. Um, like there are STEAM creative places. You know, the science... I don't remember what the T stands for in STEAM. Science, T, engineering, art, and math places that encourage kids to explore science and math as part of the learning process, and that's pretty cool. There is, there's a lady here in town, she has like seven kids. Um, <laughs> that's not an exaggeration. She and her husband own the uh, STEAM maker space but it's definitely geared towards the kids. It's not really, like I went in once and I just felt really out of place. Cause I went in during the opening and I'm like, okay, well, while there's all these other people here and I'm not gonna be like jumped on as far as, hi, can I help you? Uh, I went in and I toured the space and I was like, ooh, this is, I am too old to be in this space. Which, you know, not a bad thing, it's just, I'm not the target demographic. Technology, thank you. <laughs> Science, technology, engineering, math, and art. Math. E, arts and math, sorry. But yeah, there's one of those in town, which is like a maker space, but for kids, which is also really cool. And I'm glad that that is a resource that exists in town because she takes she takes donated materials from people's like art stashes and and hordes in general and will have them be available as materials for use in you know projects and stuff which is neat she set up at the farmer's market several times to advertise her business it's you know it's a good thing for the kids here to have What else? Where do I need to go with this piece? I think I need to add a little more length. Hey, I got a decent chunk done so far. Like from where my thumb is here to this thumb over here. All done on stream today. That's pretty cool. Yes, I love it. It's a good piece. Oh, I think my back's starting to be like, nope. I think I might have to call it guys just to uh, just to be on the safe side I would I would I would rather not push too far tonight but I think I've done quite a lot I was glad to have your company while you've been here here's the progress 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 I love glow streams just they're, they're, they're so cool but like I feel a little bit of eye strain Definitely need to give my back a bit of a break. Oh, I can pop it better now though, so that's cool. Technology, I'm also dead. <laughs> Lovely talking to you as always, as always, of course. I'm gonna try to start on Turtwig next week sometime for you, friend. Remind me, okay, if I... <laughs> Remind me and tell me that I said that I was gonna start on him next week. Because I have uh, store update Saturday, which is really my only deadline. 
I was gonna try to do farmer's market this weekend, but like, I don't need to push at this point and it's getting a little late in the week to be invoiced for that and to get a good spot. So I'm gonna wait till next weekend for that. Cause I'm just still relaxing and a lot behind on all the things I want to do. So it's just like, no, no, no. Just, just be good with the one deadline. Don't make it two deadlines like you did last week. That was a bad idea. But I will do more on the peacock as well. Awesome. Awesome. Yes, we need to uh, go back and forth. Go back and forth more now that I have a little more time to focus on him. But yeah, this piece only gets done on stream. And I don't know who is live right now. But we shall find out, huh? Uh oh, oh, BK's live. Yeah, let's go say hi to BK. I haven't rated her in a little while. She's usually doing some bead work. It says rainbow bracelet. So I'm gonna rate her before she reads me. Ha. Okay, the zigzag looks cool, doesn't it? It looks very neat. I'm very happy with it. It's it's gonna be a nifty bracelet. That's for sure. I'm very very thrilled. I love this technique. It's so clean and simple looking, unlike other forms of diagonal peyote stitch. They look a little messy. Even with delicas, they can look a little messy. So uh, yeah, ooh, BK has a little bit of a different setup too. We're gonna see what she's up to. All right, thank you guys all for beating here. Thank you for beating my friends and keeping me company tonight. It's been nice. So I'm going to get this raid started. B. Okay, I can't type in the dark either. I can't do anything in the dark. L. <laughs> hey, let me have my friend. <laughs> Puns. <laughs> I will bead you later, guys. Okay? Okay. See you soon.